we're going to basically run through uh, auto template very briefly. We're not going to spend so much time on it, but just going to use it as a tool, sort of as it's meant to be used. We're then going to walk through um, formulas uh, and how to set up some some various um, use cases for formulas, and then we'll we'll do um, uh, some multi-select fields. Finally, creating some conditional clauses and using macros, which macros are really just sort of placeholders for bringing in values from other fields. Um, we'll look at advanced conditionals with um, some input types and things like that. And then finally, we'll walk through using simple view. Um, so again, we're going to record this and we'll put it up on our website. Uh, so don't worry about having to memorize all of it. But I think this, uh, this should be um, you know, our most advanced training that we offer and uh, should give you everything you need to know in terms of advanced features here. Great, thank you. No problem. Um, okay, uh, and as I mentioned, Martin, feel free to ask any questions as they come up, uh, just because it's you know just us today. So uh, if I'm going too fast, let me know, um, or if you have something you're curious about, feel free to feel free to speak up. Sure. Okay, so this is going to look very similar to the doc we went over yesterday, the engagement letter. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this case, we're going to kind of breeze through the first piece, which is the auto template piece, and we're just going to cover some of the basic things here, um, and then we'll hop right into um, right into uh, using some formulas. So as this is doing its thing, right, it's basically just as a reminder, picking up anything in brackets or highlights or people's names, dates, addresses, things like that. It's going to give us our list of suggestions, which we can then go through and reject or accept any of them that we like. Um, the ones in brackets, obviously, I'm going to keep because I did that on purpose. These other ones that are getting picked up are highlighted, but those are just kind of notes for me. Uh, so again, these are our accepted suggestions. I'm going to go ahead and click create these fields. And once again, auto template will go through and actually create um, the fields for us out of the bracketed text. Um, but what we're going to do next after this has sort of done its first pass is we're going to go through and if you remember from yesterday, we have this sort of next part of the process where we want to go through the fields that auto template has created and um, you know, massage them or adjust them to however they need to be um, or whatever form they need to be in, you know, whether that's changing the yeah. names or changing the field types, et cetera. So what we're going to do is, um, is we're actually going to adjust the field types of a first, the first couple of fields here. And it was actually the client name um, in caps that, um, that we're going to adjust. So we're basically going to set it up such that we can have two different fields, uh, one for client name regular and one for client name caps. And that client name in caps is going to be a formula that's going to automatically capitalize whatever is in um, the client name field. So obviously, you can see here's our client first name, all caps, client last name, all caps. And then let's see down at the bottom, we've got client last name and client first name. So I'm just going to move these up next to the others so we can see them all together, just for understanding's sake. Now, um, what we're going to do here is basically take these all caps fields here. Let me just adjust them a little bit. The first name all caps and the last name all caps. And we're just going to edit the field type. So here's our edit uh, button over here, our, our edit menu over here on each field. We're going to edit it and we're going to change this type to formula. So this formula is, again, basically like having an Excel formula within Word um, where we can do manipulations on existing woodpecker fields that we've created. So I know uh, it, well, actually, if I click on this formula box, there's now a list of all the fields that I've created. And if I scroll down, there's a list of pretty much every Excel function that exists. So what I can do is I know there's an upper function in there. And um, that upper function basically just takes in one input, which in this case is going to be client first name. So I'm just going to click on client first name, and it's going to insert a reference to that field here within this upper function, and I'm going to close it with a parenthesis, and that's it. All of the syntax for all of the functions um, can be found at this learn more link. That's basically going to tell you, you know, how how to use all these things if you're not familiar with them. For this format drop down here, this is something that you would use um, when, say, you're doing a date calculation, or maybe even you wanted to specify integers or decimals or currencies, you wanted to finally format that stuff. But obviously, that's not relevant to us because we're just doing some some string manipulation We're we're uppercasing the client first name here. And then for the guidance notes, we probably don't need to leave any guidance notes on this because for fields that are automatically calculated like formulas, those uh, don't require user input. So they're not actually me leaving a guidance note here maybe is just sort of a note on what this is doing, but no one's actually going to be filling in this field because it's going to be automatically calculated. So if we click save here down at the bottom. Well, no, not down at the bottom. Now we put it up at the top. We just edited that field. Here's our client first name all caps. So if we change this to 
John, we should see that here's our first name in all caps that's automatically capitalizing the first name. Fairly simple. Let's do the exact same thing for the client name, uh, client last name all caps. Let's do formula, upper, we'll enter in the client last name like this, and we're gonna click save. And now again, let's do Smith like this, perfect. Set that up pretty easily. That's sort of a very basic example of a formula. When we populate this, you're gonna see that these client last name all caps will go here and here, whereas throughout the rest of the doc where we've got first name and last name, those will, um, those will get the lowercase versions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, any questions on the, on the basic use of the formulas there for uppercasing? No, thanks. Perfect. So next, um, I'm come, gonna come down to this section here. Um, I just left a highlight for myself to remind me, myself. Um, these, this is sort of, obviously this is an engagement letter. And in this particular use case, we're coming up with an engagement letter for um, a client where, you know, me as the attorney, I'm offering um, a set of obviously services, right, that I'm going to provide. Now, in some cases, I may want to say that I'm going to draft the following doc documents. Maybe I want to say I'm going to draft all of them, maybe only a few of them, um, maybe, you know, so, some or all or fewer than, you know, zero to all of them. So a good use case for this sort of a thing is our multi-select field, where you might want to have one or multiple options that you can actually select from. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a multi-select field for this paragraph here. So I'll just go up to create a field and let's call this um, documents drafted. And we already have the multi-select uh, field type selected because I was just doing it a little bit before. But our multi-select is very much like the single select field, um, except that these options that we specify, we're going to be able to select between them um, and we're gonna be able to select multiple of them at the same time if we want. So I'm gonna basically do the same thing here where I specify a list of options and these list of options are actually just gonna be the, um, the individual options here themselves. So I'm just gonna do a copy and paste and I don't want the bullets here, I just want the actual, uh, the actual item. So I'm just gonna do that for each item here. So again, we don't want the bullet. Do the living will. And then maybe this one. Perfect. Okay, let me just get rid of that. Okay, great. Now when we're setting up a multi-select field, the other piece that we're gonna wanna specify is what the separator is, right? So if we, if we choose uh, one or more of these options, uh, in the field that this should be inserted, we want to specify what each of the options should be separated by. So we're, there's a couple of standard options here, right? It could be comma, bolded list, numbered list, new line. Also though, we could specify something custom, right? So we might say, um, you know, custom separator like that, right? Or we could say, well, we want it to be a semicolon or we want it to be, you know, quotes, whatever it is. So you can select from obviously this, um, basic uh, or standard set of separators that we offer. In this case, we're gonna choose bulleted list because we want it to look like that one, but we could also have obviously something custom if we wanted to. We can also specify a default if we wanted. So we could say, all right, well by default, let's have you know this one, this one, and this one, for example, such that each time this template is used or, or up or loaded, um, this field is gonna default to these options. So. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it blank for now just to keep things simple for us, but that's sort of the basic use case of default. Now, one, one important thing to know about default values within fields is that if you specify a default value for a field, again, each time the template is, is loaded uh, or Woodpecker loads for this document, the default will show as long as there hasn't been a previous value specified for that field. So for example, um, if I specified uh, a date field and I wanted it to default to today. If I had filled out the date field with say, you know, March 1st, and then I opened that document again, it's gonna say March 1st. It's not gonna say the default. So that's why we say that normally you, you wanna have sort of a master template that acts as your kind of like clean slate that you use every time whenever you're preparing a new document for a new recipient. And then in that way your defaults kick in. Mm -hmm. 
So let's, uh, in this case, we also might want to uh, add some guidance notes because this actually is something that someone's going to be interacting with. So let's say um, select the documents that will be provided to the client. We're going to go ahead and save and down at the bottom is going to be our new field. Let's just drag it up to the top next to the others. And you can see here's our guidance notes. And if we clicked on this, we've got our, we've got our options here. So now we could select one or multiple of them, right? And they're just gonna get added as sort of little um, boxes that we could keep or remove, et cetera. Now, finally, I wanna actually get this field into the doc. So I'm gonna put my cursor right below where the, that last list was. I'm gonna click on plus, and here's my documents drafted placeholder. But now let's just do, you know, let's do a couple of them. Let's do three, let's say. And then I'm gonna click populate. And we should see that these three get added here, separated by bullets for us. Um, and uh, uh, some of the other stuff is going to snap into place as well, like the first and last name, et cetera. So for example, if we go up to the top, here's our John Smith in caps. Uh, down here is here's our John Smith in non-caps. And then here's our, um, here's our new multi-select field. So at this point, I would probably just delete this stuff here and then maybe just give us a little bit of, uh, little bit of space because this is supposed to be on a new page. So now, anytime I change this, right, if I say I want all of these, and I click populate, we should get all of those uh, options now uh, entered on, entered into this uh, list separated by bullets. And we could obviously always change the, um, the separator or obviously specify a custom one. Mm -hmm. So that's a quick use case for multi-line, uh, I'm sorry, multi-select fields. Um, any questions on that? No, none, thanks. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to come down here now, and this is going to take us into, um, into custom clauses using the clause library and conditional clauses. So this is where we, we start to get a little fancy. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is if we go to the menu, I'm going to go to the clause library. And if you recall, the clause library is really just a way for you to set up standard, a standard set of clauses for your firm or your team and um, use these clauses across templates, uh, across as many templates as you want. Now, the idea behind the clause library is that um, they are, they're standard, right? And you have sort of one source of truth that you can ultimately edit uh, in one place instead of having to update elsewhere. Um, not to mention it's a good way to sort of abstract large amounts of text into sort of a little, you know, one little reference um, so that it's, it's less cumbersome. So what I want to do here and what I've set up is I basically said, okay, well, for the communication section, if I have a priority client, for example, that I decide, um, I'd like to give them you know, assure them that my communication is going to be, you know, any communication received by me at any time and I'll be checked and I'll, I'll check my, you know, my voicemail, fax, email and respond as soon as possible, right? So this is sort of the VIP treatment here. Whereas yeah. this would be my, maybe my standard, right? Which is I receive communications, but I don't check outside of normal business hours, days, Monday through Friday, nine to five, excluding holidays, right? So I want to basically be able to toggle between these two communication, uh, commitments, um, depending on, let's say, whether this is a, cri pr a priority client or a standard client. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is turn each of these into a clause that I can then toggle through. So we're going to go ahead and add a clause here. And let's call this uh, priority communication, for example. Um, and then I'm just going to go into this content box, and I'm going to paste that uh, content that I just copied. So I just selected it. And I did on a mono Mac, so I did a command C on a PC, it would be uh, control C. You could also right click and do a copy. And then once we're in here, we'll either right click and, whoops, not search with Google. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> Let's try that again. We would right click and we would do a paste, or uh, the shorthand is just command V on a Mac or control C or control V on a PC. Um, so here's our, here's our new uh, clause. We're going to go ahead and save that clause. And then down, let's see, down here, here's our priority communication clause. Great. Now let's do the same thing for this standard communication clause. We'll go and add a clause, standard communication. We're going to paste that, paste that one in there, click save, and now we've got our standard communication clause. Perfect. So that's just a, that's how you create a clause. It's pretty simple. Now, the way to reference or use these clauses is that we're actually going to, we want to first create a, um, we want to create a field that's going to dictate 
which of these should be used, right? So in this case, I might want to create a drop down or a single select that's going to be, you know, a communication, uh, or even let's call this um, client uh, status, let's say. You know, we could call it anything we wanted, but let's choose the single select type and we'll call this priority and standard. Or even let's call this client communication commitment. How about that? So we've got two options here. We're going to save this. And now at the bottom, here's our client communication commitment as a drop down. Let's move it up next to the others. We have all of our active stuff together. Now, what we want to do is set up a conditional where this will dictate which of these shows up in this location. So we're going to create a field and we'll call this, let's call this communication commitment. And for the type, we're going to choose conditional. And we went over conditionals yesterday, um, but basically the way that this works, you would say if the uh, client communication commitment equals priority, then I would like to reference that clause that we just created. So to reference a clause, you can click on this little plus, uh, plus button over here on the right, and it's going to give you a list of all of your clauses plus a list of all of your fields. So when uh, a reference to a field or a clause is inserted, like it will be in just a second, uh, for example, if I were to click on this and it inserts the name of the, the field surrounded by curly braces, we call this a macro. So if you see the word macro in, you know, support documentation or elsewhere, this is what it's referring to when you actually, yeah. actually have a, a field or a cause uh, having its reference inserted somewhere. So we're going to choose, let's see, priority communication. That was the cause we created. And you can see it just inserts a reference and it's the same thing just with two sets of curly brackets instead of um, one set. We'll go ahead and do another conditional here, which says if the client communication commitment equals standard, then let's go ahead and reference that uh, standard communication. Perfect. Now, um, we, we don't need to necessarily set up uh, anything for this, you know, if both of these don't pass because our client communication commitment only has two options and we covered both of them. Once we click save, here's our new communication commitment. Let's move it up next to the other. And you can see it's being ignored because we've got no value selected for this. So let's choose priority. And so you can see the placeholder just shows up, but as soon as mm -hmm. we insert this field, the placeholder is going to get evaluated. So if we move our, make a little space for ourselves and then click on our plus button to insert the cause, you can see that here now the cause has been inserted. And at this point, we can probably just get rid of these. So now if I were to change this to standard, you can see the placeholder adjusts. And if I click populate, this clause should now get swapped out for the standard communication clause. And what's great about this is now we could use these standard and, communi standard and priority communication clauses across templates. And if we needed to change them, we would just go ahead and update them in one place in the clause library. Yeah. Any questions on that? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so we're gonna get to the, the sort of final fanciest piece here. Um, which is we, we have this fees section here. So let me just describe what we want to happen and, and how we're going to set it up. So what we want to do is we basically want to say that, okay, we have some fee amount and we also want this second sentence to be variable. So basically this second sentence is saying fees are paid payable in the following installments, right? So fee one amount with a fee one due date, fee two amount with a fee two due date. I want to be able to say, well, Sometimes I just want there to be one installment, right? One fee with one due date. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would like there to be uh, two installments or maybe more, right? With one fee amount, one due date and another fee amount and another due date like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that we can toggle between those things really easily and we'll get prompted for the right information um, depending on what we select. So uh, basically, firstly, we've got our fee amount. That's all well and good. I think we have a, a field for it. Here that is, that's great. Now, what I wanna do though, is I firstly wanna create a field that's going to uh, allow me to set up um, this sort of logic. So the way to think about this stuff, right, and when you're tackling something like this is to first map it out in your head, um, just as we did just now, about mm -hmm. how, this should, how this should work, right? So how the logic actually, you know, should, should actually come into being. Um, and in this case, right, what I want to do, it's, it's not that complicated. I want to say, you know, I want to have a drop down that says 
is, is the how many how many fee uh, installments, right? And then that is going to dictate um, the rest of the conditional logic that I'm going to set up with these sort of adding and removing themselves. So firstly, let's create a field and let's call this number of fee installments. And again, we'll make this pretty simple. We'll just call it a single select and let's just do one and two for now. Now down here is our number of fee installments. Now, secondly, what I want to do is I want to set up a, um, I want to set up a field that prompts me for the fee amount one and for the fee amount two, if depending on the number of fee installments I select. So this is where we get into the sort of more advanced conditionals. So if I create a field, I'm going to call this, um, actually, wait, let's just take the existing fee amount one that we have. So we'll say, here's the fee amount one. And I want to turn this into a conditional that is going to prompt me for the fee amount one or the fee one amount if the number of fee installments is one or more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll go ahead and edit it. Now let's call this a conditional. And we'll say if the, uh, where is it? Number of fee installments greater than, I'm actually going to say zero. So the reason I'm going to say zero is because I want this to evaluate to true if the number of fee installments is one or two or three or four. Mm -hmm. If we had this equal to one, then this would evaluate to false if the number of fee installments was two, right? So we basically want to have it be greater than some number. And in this case, it's zero to account mm. for one. Now, um, this is where we get, uh, where we get um, a little more complex. So there's a little drop down here next to the then box. Um, and that then box is going to allow us to basically select what type uh, of field this then box should be. So it defaults to single line text. We could also have it be rich text, right? So this basically means that we could say this should be, you know, this conditional should be rich text or conditional styling. But this last one is the one we're looking for, it's input. And input basically says, okay, well, if the number of fee installments is greater than zero, then turn this whole field into an input box that's going to ask us for the fee amount. So we can also leave some guides notes for ourselves, right? So we could say enter the fee one amount. Okay, so if we click save here, you're gonna see that the fee amount is grayed out. If we choose one, it becomes an input. It asks us for some value. If we choose two, it also becomes an input. Now, this is a, it's a basic way to set up a conditional input. We're going to see how we can get these things to show and hide, depending on what we select here in, in a bit. But firstly, I just want to make sure that, um, that, that that wasn't confusing. We're going to do the exact same thing for the fee two amount. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing for fee two amount. We're going to edit it, and we're going to turn it into a conditional. And we'll say, if the number of fee installments is greater than one, in this case, because we only want this to show up if the fee to amount is, I'm sorry, if the number of fee installments is two or more. Yeah. And again, we're going to turn it into an input and we'll go and we'll, let's say, you know, enter fee to amount. Now here's our fee to amount. If we were to change this to one, you can see that it gets grayed out. Now, when we turn on simple view in a little bit, the, anything that's grayed out is going to get hidden from the form, right? So that's how we can get stuff to sort of hide and show. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know I'm going fast, um, but uh, are you with me so far? Does this- No, I'm following. Sense? Okay, perfect. So next, yeah. next what we wanna do is we wanna say, okay, well, this fee one due date and this fee two due date, they should be probably equally spaced out, right? So this fee one due date, I wanna say that the fee one due date should be 30 days after the date of the letter. So to do that, mm -hmm. actually have this fee one due date be a formula that's automatically calculates 30 days after the, the first due date or the, the date of the letter. So let's go ahead and do an edit again and let's change this to a formula. And we're gonna use, again, we're gonna use another function that lives in this formula drop down here. And that function is called date add, like this. So we're going to basically add some number of days to this to some date, and in this case, mm -hmm. it's this one that we're selecting and we'll call it 30 days like this. And the syntax for this again can be found at this learn more link. I just obviously have it memorized. Yeah. Now, um, again, we could select a format for this newly calculated date. Let's say we want that one. We're gonna go ahead and click save. 
you can see it says invalid date, but that's because there's nothing selected for our date here. And actually, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and make this a date field as well. And let's just choose a value. So now you can see the fee one due date is 30 days after whatever we selected for this one. So let's move yep. this one down so we can see them next to each other. And if we were to change this to two, you can see that this adjust, or sorry, to five two, this adjusts to June 1st. So we've now basically said that the fee one due date is gonna be 30 days after whatever this date is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. But in this case, for the fee two due date, let's say that we want it to be 60 days. Yep. So let's call this date add. And then let's see, my date is down here. Let's say 60 days like this. Maybe let's choose the same date format here. Great. So now you can see that there, this is 30 days after that date. This is 60 days after that date. So what we've now specified is that if there is a fee two, right, our fee two due date is going to be automatically calculated for us. Now, uh -huh. the last piece here is that we actually want this sentence to sort of pull together the correct, um, the correct values depending on what we select. So in this case, you know, if we just left it here right now, this sentence would always say fee one amount, fee two, fee one due date, fee, mm. two, amount, fee two due date. So sure. obviously if there's only one, we want to remove this second part. So this is when um, we can use a final conditional to actually wrap, wrap all these values together into a sentence um, that's going to pull all of the values from our, um, from our fields we've created into one thing, depending on the selection of number of fee installments. So let's do that. Let's say this is fee sentence. And for the type, we're going to do a conditional. And so we'll basically say, if the number of fee installments, uh, let's say, in this case, we want to do, let's do equals just to keep it simple. We'll say equals one. Then we would like to have this sentence, but a little bit modified. So I'm just going to copy the sentence, paste it in here. And now I want it to say fee one amount due on fee one due date. Uh, but I don't need the second part, right? This, yep. this uh, and fee two amount due on fee two due date. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And so now we just have, we would just have fee one amount due on fee one due date. But in this case, we want to make sure these are macros, right? These are referencing the values of the fields that we've already created. So if I delete that, I'm going to now insert a reference to fee one amount. If I can find it. Here we go. Fee, let's see, fee one amount. There we go. And then same thing here. We'll do fee one due date. Like that. Perfect. So now we've basically said if the number of fee installments is one, we want to create this sentence. Okay. Now yeah. let's let's do the same thing for two for the for the two use case. If the number of fee installments equals two, then we're going to do the same thing, but we want to leave the sentence, but we still want to replace the placeholders with macros. So let's see. So if I Fee, let's scroll down here. Fee one, let's see, fee one amount. Yep. And then do on fee one due date. Fee one due date. And then we'll do the same thing for this fee two amount here. Fee two amount. There we go. And then this will be due on fee two due date. Perfect. So basically what we set up is this final piece, which is this sentence that's cobbling all of the values that we've created together, um, yeah. depending on the number of fee installments. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So let's see this thing in action here. Uh, let's see. So down here, here's our fee sentence. What we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of these. Now, one quick thing to note, you can see that some of the, these are some of the fields that we've already inserted, right? So fee one amount there, we've got fee one amount. This is the one place it's actually showing up. We can yep. confirm that by doing a show instances. You can see it's right there. But if we, we can, we can, we're still able to delete these. We can still delete these field references. That's okay. Um, just the next time we populate, it'll give us a little warning message that says, hey, um, 
if if you meant to delete some of the instances of the fields in the in the doc, you can ignore this. But otherwise, um, you know, something might have gone wrong, and we can try to reinsert them for you. But in this case, obviously, we did it on purpose. So I'll just put my cursor there, and I'm going to insert this fee sentence. Now, what we're going to want to do is just give ourselves, let's say, a fee one amount, and maybe we do a fee two uh, fee. Let's see, where's my fee two amount? Oh, it's being ignored because we only have one number of fee installments. Yeah. So if we click populate here, we should see that our B1 amount should get pulled directly into this fee sentence here uh, and added in uh, for us right there. Um, and like I said, here's that little warning message, but we're expecting it, so it's okay. And you can see that the counters uh, for the instances of the field update once we get, rid of, get out. So what we should have done though is uh, created as a currency. At the moment, it simply says 1,000. Yes, good, good point. So um, what we could do, right, is we could obviously uh, just add a add a currency symbol if we wanted to. We could also, um, if we were doing some calculation on the fee, the formula allows for a currency um, uh, format. However, it won't, do the, it won't do the currency symbol for you. So the currency symbol you're going to have to add in um, at some point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, but what we could do, though, is in our fee sentence, we could get a little fancy here. We could say, okay, well, whatever the fee amount is, let's just put, let's just put some dollar signs in front of it like this. So no matter what, we're going to always have our dollar signs um, of course, in, yep. in the sentence, right? Okay, so now to tie this all together, what I want to show you is what I was, uh, you know, because this is a little cumbersome, right? There's a lot going on here. Like if I tried to edit some of these formulas, like they don't, they don't require editing because they're automatically calculated. There's a lot going on. It's a little messy. So also we want to have the fee one and fee two amounts show and hide themselves depending on what I'm going to need to enter. So the final piece here is let's go over to uh, the menu and we're going to go to settings and we're going to turn on simple view. Mm -hmm. so simple view basically only shows fields that require user input and they hi it hides any dynamically calculated or excluded fields. So we'll see what that means here. If I turn it on, you can see at the top it says simple view is on, seven fields are being hidden. So if I scroll down here, you can see that my, uh, my, um, my, formula fields are, are gone, my conditionals are gone, et cetera. Um, and I only see the, the fields that I actually need to worry about entering values for. So in this case, it's just you know that date, it's the number of fee installments, two, and you're gonna see when I enter two, that second fee amount appears because we set yeah. it as a conditional, a conditional input. And you know maybe my second fee amount is 2000, and then um, even, even, um, uh, even you know, here's my, final fee amount. And then once I click populate, we should see that this whole sentence here should adjust pulling in the fee one and two amounts as well as the fee one and two due dates um, for us, even though they're being hidden. So you see that that happened there? Yep. Perfect. So that's, that's the final piece is, is simple view is often really helpful um, for, you know, obviously simplifying the view here as well as if you're trying to pat, you know, trying to share this with someone, they don't need to know about sort of all the underlying under the hood stuff going on. Sure. Um, they just want to, they just need if to I can ask a question on, sure. the, on that conditional. Um, what is likely to occur in a contract, of course, is that you'll include a clause uh, and it might have two or three definitions that hang off that clause, those two or three definitions will appear in a totally different place in the contract. It might mm -hmm. be up the top or it might be down the bottom. I, I take it, it we, we would use exactly the same way that you've created that sentence, except I suppose number one, you create the macro, and then number two, where you want the, the definition, you would create um, the, the inputted clause, which would be the definition at a different point in the contract and just say, if clause one is used, then this word appears or, or this definition appears here. Yes. Yep. And, and is used is, a, is an interesting, um, is an interesting uh, idea. So th that brings up something, um, something that I want to quickly show you. So the way you would do that is let's just take a look at this conditional. So you would do it with these different operators, right? So is used translates to is not empty. Right. Right. Yeah. So you could say if my, you know, if whatever clause is not empty, then insert this definition here, for example. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Um, 
Okay, so let's see. The th that's our fee sentence here, right? And it wasn't, you know, obviously I've I've been doing this a while, but it wasn't too bad. Um, and you know, setting this stuff up is it's once you get used to it, it's it's fairly intuitive. Um, and thankfully, you'll really only have to set it up once, and and that's that's it. Um, so if we if we come down here, actually here, maybe I want to just uh, get rid of my highlight on this guy, um, so that it looks a little normal. And then down here, I think. Uh, that's that's all we really wanted to do, and we could add another, you know, acceptance date if we want, or we could leave it that way so that John Smith actually fills that in when when he signs it. 